I spent a few days in the San Francisco area and came away with some shots that I'm really proud of. This is one of them. I'm going to show you how it was shot and how it was processed. Secret, it was focus stacked without a tripod. Here's how it was done. Okay, here are the raw photos that we started with on this shot. So this was a sunrise, uh, got super lucky because I scouted this location the day before. There had been some high clouds and kind of turbulent skies in the Bay Area and I hoped. This is the day that I left to drive home and I thought, okay, I'm gonna go and see if I can get this sunrise shot that I have in mind. And so the hard part, you know, is getting up before dawn and making that 45 minute drive in the dark in an unfamiliar area and getting back to the spot and then hoping that the skies light up like you think they will. And gratefully they did. And so these are the raw photos and how that, how that looked while I was there. Um, these are two images that were focus stacked. So you can see in this image here, the focus is on the bridge, a little bit of a noisy photo, but that's okay. I'm going to leave that there. Um, and that the foreground is a bit out of focus. And I held my camera and to, to focus stack without a tripod is not advisable. I did not have my tripod with me, but what I did is shot this image first. You can see here that the foreground is in focus. The bridge is unfocused in the background. So what I did is line up my shot and my composition. I grabbed focus on the foreground and then set my focus point to the bridge without focusing on the bridge and then snapped the picture with the foreground in focus, hit my focus button focused on the bridge and then clicked another image. So with as little camera movement as possible, I was able to click off a foreground shot, focus on the bridge, click off a bridge shot. And it's not perfect. Like you can see that there's some movement here, um, but I'll show you what we can do in Photoshop to fix that. So these are the two images that were focus stacked together. Um, to do this in Photoshop, um, these were just imported into Lightroom, just raw files. I'm going to select both of them and I'm going to export these as a TIFF. I have my settings set up to just export these as a full quality TIFF file. And there are other ways to do this, but this is how I'm doing it on this one. And then I'm going to go into my folder where those exported. I'm going to grab both images, highlight them, and then I'm going to open these in Photoshop. Photoshop is going to open both of these up. I'm going to unlock them. So now we have both files open in Photoshop. What I'm going to do is copy the layer on one of the photos. So I'm going to control C to copy. I'm going to go back to my tab with the other photo. I'm going to unlock the background and I'm going to control V so it pastes it. So now I have both photos in one file here. Now, here is where the, where the focus stacking takes place. I'm going to select both layers. So just click shift and select the layer that's not selected. And then we're going to go to edit auto align layers. And that's going to tell Photoshop, uh, I just leave this on auto and don't click anything else here leave it on auto, click OK. And then Photoshop is going to say, OK, how can I align these? And it did it that quickly. And you can see the little uh, the little white on the edges. We'll crop that out, of course, but that's where the misalignment was. When you use a tripod, you typically don't have that. But for handheld, I would say that's pretty darn good. <laughs> it's pretty darn good. And it was fast. You have like after you take the one photo, do not move the camera just refocus and snap the picture again. And um, it tends to work out pretty well. Now, the next step, once we have this, uh, our photos auto aligned here is to go back into edit and then auto blend layers. And you'll see what this is gonna do. Um, you'll have an option between making it a panorama and making a stack. We're gonna make a stack image here. And then I'm just leave, leave those automatically checked. I'm gonna click okay. And now Photoshop is going to take the areas in focus on both images and then create a new image with only the focused areas. And here is how that's going to look. And you can see 
so now look we have this area in focus and we have this bridge in focus so focus stack is as easy as that in photoshop when the images are properly aligned and you can see here in layer one what it did it, it took it took certain parts of layer one that were in focus it took the parts of layer zero that were in focus and just created a merged file and if you, you take this out um you can see what it did so th that's the part in focus that it took from that photo and then here was the in focus part that it took from the other photo and then it blended those so this is not a perfect blend but it does a great job for our purposes today now that we have these this final image selected we can just delete these two layers because we don't need them anymore and we'll just delete those right there just like that and now we have a focus stacked image that i am just going to save a copy it's going to do just a, a high quality tiff again i'm not going to compress it i'm going to save it as a macintosh file and i'm going to say okay and now that merged file is back in our folder here we can select that you can see it's a 340 megabyte file so it's plenty big and then we're going to open with lightroom and now we have a focus stacked image that we can process into a final image which is now here so now we can process this however we like so the first thing i'll do is i'm just going to do a select sky and see how that works we had that just epic sunrise sky that morning and sometimes if we select sky it's hard to tell if it actually if it selected the bridge too and it might have so let's start playing around with this here yeah it looks like it selected the bridge too so i'm going to do a subtract and an object and then i'm going to select the bridge and it should just pull that out and so now we can play with that sky and really make it pop. So I'm gonna pull down the highlights. Um, I'm gonna turn that overlay off so I can see what I'm doing. Contrast up, exposure down just a little bit. I can pull up the whites in my skies. Start to get those colors really popping. Temperature, we might increase the temperature a little bit, like so. And sometimes dehaze is a good tool for the sky. If we add some dehaze, it can add some, some drama into there. So then we're making a really dramatic sky that is absolutely real and how it was. Pretty great. Okay, so once we have the sky done, then we can go down and we can do a duplicate and invert. And so then that's going to select everything that is not the sky. And here, we, I don't think we have to do too much. I might increase the exposure just a little bit and then bring down the blacks just a little bit. There's a lot here that isn't really necessary to the photograph. And I think this would look even better as a vertical. So if I go into the crop, take our aspect ratio, turn it to three to two, and then rotate it. Yeah, that's what I want to do. So we take the aspect ratio to three to two, rotate it vertical, and now I think we've got a composition that's a little more pleasing. And we've eliminated some of that stuff on the side. We've really put the focus on the bridge. So we have the color in the sky, the bridge, and this, this in-focus foreground that I think is, uh, is a really pleasing photograph. And then we can just do some fine tuning if we'd like. I might do with our curves a little bit if we bring up the whites pull down the darks something like that like to take a look up at our histogram here and see what see what moving our midtones does might be a good idea to move our midtones to the right a little bit and then highlights i also should increase a little bit typically i'll take the clarity down to about 20 
I just like how it adds that soft feel to it versus if we go that way, it just makes it a little bit harsher. I prefer to have it down here and then add some texture in the details back. And then the dehaze, I like to add some negative dehaze, which again is just going to soften up our photo. And then a little bit of vignetting. And then that's really going to pull the focus into that bridge in the middle. Might even bring up the exposure a little bit. But there we go. We've gone from this photo, focus stacked, processed, and ended up with that photo. Was that helpful? I hope so. Focus stacking is a great way to get a really crisp image from the foreground all the way to the background. It doesn't always apply. Sometimes having a blurred background or a blurred foreground makes more sense. If you're planning to do a focus stack, do bring your tripod because that's always the better way. But if you find yourself without it, then focus on the foreground, move your focus point to the background, take your picture, focus on the background, take your picture again. Typically that'll work if you can do that fast enough with minimum camera movement and then let Photoshop auto align. In this case it worked, so uh, that's great. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I would love to have you on board. There's more tutorials coming, there's more adventures coming, there's more trips coming, and I want you to be a part of it. I would love to have you along. Thank you for being here and we'll see you next time.